welcome uh, to online data collection and, and management. And if you are also enrolled in data preparation and workflow management, this is also the first part of the introduction. So um, I'm going to post the introduction of ODCM also for, for, for deep prep people. I mean, it's just because I'm the same person and there's not like so much different stuff to tell, um, at least um, to introduce myself. So uh, thanks for turning on your, your cameras. That's amazing. Um, the chat is open. Um, when I started watching, actually, I don't watch gaming on Twitch, but sometimes I watch programmers, I need to admit, you know, and they just like comment on, on the stuff that they write in Python. And I just love how active the, 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 the chat is. So don't treat the chat as something, you know, formal. Treat the chat as, you know, you talking to your friends in class and, you know, maybe sometimes talking to me. I love, you know, the chat explodes um, because that really makes a good class. So uh, don't feel restricted and don't try to, you know, formulate in your best English. Uh, I mean, just shout out um, if you've got questions or, you know, um, uh, yeah, have, yeah, have questions to me or even just questions with each other. Um, if you have not done so, and I really hope um, uh, not many have so, there is a course website of this course. It's available at odcm.hannesdata.com, and the data prep course is available at dprep.hannesdata.com. And this is essentially everything that you need. Um, and everything is there, including like grading guidelines and stuff. So, um, I really encourage you to take a look at this website um, and I'll introduce this website also a little bit, um, but like uh, just open it in your browser. I'll, I'll put the URL in the chat so you can just click on it, you know, for those lazy people in the morning. Um, uh, just, uh, you know, just open the site and, and browse around a bit while you um, listen to this introductory uh, lecture. So what's the agenda today? Uh, first of all, I'd love to get to know you and I'd love to talk just a little bit about what I do. So you kind of know what to contact me for and, you know, maybe where my expertise lies and maybe where not to contact me for. Um, then I'm going to give you a motivation for this class. Actually, I've been, I've been planning to have this class for years. And, and finally, I got the chance to be able to teach and develop it. So you're the second cohort of this class. The class is nowhere from finished even, but, you know, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, there are going to be hiccups here and there, and maybe the workload uh, can be daunting at times. But I really changed the class from how I gave it last time. So if you have friends who have done this program before, it's much lighter weight than it used to be. But, you know, it may still be difficult to many, uh, especially if you don't have any background in programming. Um, and then I'll go through the course framework and learning goals, and then I'll talk to you about some practical arrangements and show you the agenda and stuff. Um, so if you like to follow along, uh, you know, you can click on modules and week one, and you can click on slides and the exact same slide deck is, uh, is, is um, online. So, um, you know, if you, if you like, if you like that, that's fine. So let me start with a little disclaimer. So uh, I'm kind of, you know, I've been doing this for many, many years. So some things may be like super obvious to me, but like totally non-obvious to you. And you need to tell me. Um, so slow me down. Oh, uh, this meeting is being, up. just a second, Doga, I got to figure out. In my screen, I cannot see the slides. It's blocked by the, this meeting is being recorded. Can you accept it for it to be visible? Where is this? Where is this on my screen? Okay, let me just like shut off my sharing. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I was like, I don't see this pop up. All right, good though. Good for asking the question. Um, so um, slow me down and use the chat. Well, you're using the chat and you've just slowed me down. So that's perfect. Um, these live streams, they're complements. They're not substitute. What that means is um, it's, it's, well, it's not mandatory. I'm not going to check attendance, but it's really recommended you follow both of these things. You can't like do the tutorials without being in the live stream and um, the other way around. Um, I make minimal use of slides uh, and I'll post all of them and I'm going to post my recordings. Uh, minimal use of slides is I don't spend time like finding funny GIFs. Maybe sometimes I do, but like, you know, uh, the slides look like plain and simple so I can focus more on what's really important. Uh, this is not a class that is a Python course or that merely teaches you Python. Um, probably you can even do this course without like trying to understand much about Python by just like copy pasting stuff. 
But if you invest a lot of time and energy, you'll learn Python on the way. Mm, actually, um, I teach you Python in the exact same way that I learned it because I'm not a formal, um, I don't have a formal education in, in programming. Actually, I had a problem um, and I wanted to scrape and I just did some Google searches and I found out Python to be the tool to go and I just taught it myself. So I'm I completely self-taught actually. I never had any formal education in this. And that's maybe somehow why I, why I may be a good teacher to kind of throw in the cold water here. Um, uh, just trust me that uh, I will not let you drown uh, in this water. You'll have to you know, swim yourself eventually, but um, it's, it's gonna be a tough ride, but you learn Python in a way, but it's not gonna come at no cost. You have to invest in it. Um, and there is a mix of students at various levels. So um, actually, uh, who has some programming experience? Maybe you just put like your language, uh, your programming languages that you've been familiar with in the chat right now. So I kind of get um, to know what your background is. If you are newbies, you can just let me know too, by writing newbie or whatever. Um, so I need to gosh your level, but I, I guess um, you're kind of mixed in, in the audience. At least that's what it's always been. Um, so when you form teams, it may be a smart choice, not just like um, uh, collaborating with um, starters, but maybe have somebody on board who already has just a little bit of experience. And that could just be that one data camp class that this guy or girl followed for like, you know, I don't know, a month or so. See, um, with programming, you don't need an expert per se to teach you. You just need somebody who knows a little bit more because then you can learn. Um, I'm not a computer scientist. Uh, I've said I'm not a programmer. I'm not even a computer scientist. I'm a marketeer. So uh, when I talk to you um, about problems, mostly they're related to marketing and you know some of those stuff that you ask me about data and, 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 and programming, maybe I just don't know. Um, so uh, I'll actually do the Google searches in this live stream and I'll try to find an answer, but that's exactly what you need to do too, right? So you get a problem, you're not a formal programmer, but somewhere you're doing marketing analytics. So you love data at least and the coding, I guess too, but you don't know, you know how to get to where you wanna be. So you need to teach yourself the skills to like kind of kind of find the answers. And that's exactly what I do too. So, um, so actually it's good. Um, and then please consider me your coach, not your distant professor. Just call me by my first name. Um, uh, later on, I'll, I'll give you a QR for my WhatsApp. So um, that's actually WhatsApp for business on my private phone. I have opening hours from nine to five on that phone. You can even send me messages at night. I don't care, but I'll just read them between nine to five. Um, so we need to have this, this kind of conversation as if you would like gonna approach me on campus, having a coffee and talking about, I don't know, live and I don't know, your, future jobs or some business ideas. You can always be in touch with me about these kind of things. I really love this. Um, and this course is online first. I developed it online only. Um, even before Corona uh, hit, I had the plan to develop this course and I wanted it to be fully online. Um, and last year I asked students whether they'd prefer um, having this course offline and they said like, yeah, but this course doesn't work offline, right? And I agree. So the course you know, is online only and it stays like this which means um, though that if you have like this amazing idea of how to meet up on campus for some fun activities, um, I'm open to hear your thoughts on this too, uh, but I don't wanna go to a classroom and give like a lecture. Um, this seems like before, you know, two years ago, this course is online first, but if you wanna meet me in one way or setting or the other, uh, just let me know how uh, and, and we can arrange it. Um, I am born and raised in Germany. I came to the Netherlands uh, a long time ago, um, 13 years ago. I'm married, got two kids. Um, I'm streaming from Den Bosch. Um, and um, I come to office once a week at this moment, but you know, maybe I'm, I'm gonna increase that to two days a week. I consider myself, well, I'm not, my friends would consider me a geek, let's say like this. So I get like tools like 3D printing and I love coding. And actually, well, that, that actually doesn't relate to geekiness. Actually, I recently started skateboarding. So maybe the general thing is like, I love uh, learning new stuff. Uh, and, you know, that's maybe where we can relate to each other because you're all going to learn new stuff. And actually, when I think about uh, my recent, you know, skateboarding experience, um, it's actually like learning how to code. And, uh, you know, maybe I give you a couple of examples throughout the lecture on how I think uh, that learning to, to, to surf skate is actually like learning to code. So if there are skaters in the room, 
you know, reveal yourself, uh, I may need your advice because something that I learned is actually, if you look at others skating, you learn like so much better. So you also have to look at each other and how you code, right? To learn better code. That's just one advice. Anyways, I'm associate professor at Tilburg University, but you know that. What I'm interested, like when I do research, I'm interested in new business models. Subscription models were like hot <laughs> when I started to study them 10 years ago. So you need to tell me what's hot now so that I can stay relevant and make like stuff that people read. So um, subscription-based models, think about Spotify, think about Netflix, right? Like when I grew up, I stole music on, uh, you know, uh, um, what was it? Kaza, I think I started out. And, you know, you have like all of these kind of services. Well, not services, you know that, right? Um, so, um, and then subscription models came and I suddenly started paying to consume music because I found it to be simpler and I had a broader catalog and I didn't get any virus when doing it, right? So that was a big thing. So I started to study it just because I'm, I was interested in it. I got a, got a couple of papers on, on, on how Spotify changed music consumption. Uh, but subscriptions is like, you know, from, you know, some time ago. So if you've got this amazing idea on like what's hot now, because I mean, uh, you are much closer to, to let's say, um, what will become relevant in a couple of years, you know, tell me about it, study it in this course even. And then the other thing that I do is marketing mix modeling. So what that is, is actually, I have a bunch of data and um, I can somewhat calibrate, I can somewhat estimate how effective your advertising is. And I can tell you like, okay, if you spend like a couple of dollars more on advertising, this is what, uh, is, uh, this is what you'll see in, in terms of sales. Or if you decrease the price, if you offer price discounts, how many more people will buy your product? So that's super useful. And that's bread and butter of marketing, right? To like kind of optimize your marketing mix, your product, price, promotions, and um, the place where you offer products. Um, I'm not only like substantially interested in stuff, but um, I also got some method interest. So um, data management of, of structured and unstructured data is something I love. I mean, this class, and I'm also interested in, in like causal effects with observational data. Yesterday, I read an article on how to not phrase titles and probably when I reread you know rethink about this title cause and effects with observational data that doesn't mean anything to you so I'm trying to rephrase so the gold standard of trying to find out whether something actually costs an action so for example whether advertising causes an increase in sales is to run an experiment right have like a couple of you know geographic regions exposed to the ad and a couple of similar geographic regions not exposed to the ad and you someone can measure the difference in sales um, but sometimes that just doesn't do because the data has been collected in the past or, uh, you know, you are just not able to run an experiment. That's what we call observational data. The stuff has been generated. It's sitting in some company's database and you want to analyze it. How can you still measure causal effects that A actually cause B and um, that there is not just like um, some correlation behind it? Because what we want later on is tell a manager, hey, if you increase advertisement, this is what's going to happen to your sales. So we need this causal effect, right? So, and that's what I do with observational data. Um, one of my passions. Um, I, I teach uh, at Tilburg. Um, here you see my links. Again, like I said, you have um, access to these slides. So you can just click on the link. Something you may find useful is, and I need to make links open up in a new page, is my marketing uh, analytics thesis guide. So when you write a thesis that's a little more tech oriented, this is somewhat how I think about thesis. Um, don't like overgeneralize this to other supervisors. Uh, this is my guide, but you know you can see, see some inspiration here at least if you um, follow some uh, some some others um, uh, some other advisors later on. Um, I um, have a an initiative at Tilburg, um, and I, I invented kind of with colleagues a, a platform called Tilburg Science Hub. Um, you'll see a lot of this in data preparation and workflow management, where uh, you can um, teach yourself how to conduct your research uh, differently. Um, so actually, over the years, we develop kind of workflows on, on how, to, how to improve your work on, on research projects. Um, uh, I have a YouTube channel, which I haven't posted on in a while, but I will eventually do this now again. So um, for, for example, from last year, I, I recorded some student coaching sessions and uh, my most viewed video is how to scrape TikTok. So maybe that's something I should study too because it somewhat seems related. I am poor in views, you know. I'm not known yet. So you need to, you know, follow me and uh, maybe give me some, uh, you know, a popularity boost. Otherwise, my channel stays irrelevant. Um, I um, code publicly. 
So um, when you access my, my GitHub, you'll see like code that I've written and scrapers that I've written. So you can just like seek some inspiration. So the scrapers, for example, if you search for data, um, well, the source code for these classes is online, but you know, I got like a bunch of publicly available scrapers that I wrote. So you could just like check it out and I got a website so you can also find out who I am. Um, but I'm actually also super curious in, in who you are and um, I need to um, open uh, just a second um, my set of questions that I wanted to ask you, but maybe the first question that I wanna know, I wanna know where you are. Who is in Tilburg? I just write where you are. Write city names. If you're not in the Netherlands, write country names and city names. So where are you at? I'm in Embos, Tilburg, Tilburg. You're all in Tilburg, Utrecht. Good. You're probably happy that you don't have to, you know, take the train that many times. Nijmegen and Amsterdam. Same here. We got a bunch of local heroes here. Um, so who is from abroad? Cool. I'd really love to know like what goes on in your countries and which platforms that you could eventually uh, study in, in your location because um, that's gonna make it interesting for everybody. And the other thing that I wanna know, what's your experience in Python? So on a scale from one to 10, just give me a number. 10 is pro, Miranda, thanks for your honesty. Wow, okay, Marit, good. Okay, just like spot those fives that we have here because that's the ones that you need on your team. Okay, Nikki, good, three. Nikki, can you describe your experience? What have you done? I wanna know what a three is. You can write it in the chat too if you don't want to unmute yourself. That's totally fine. Okay, most of you are, you're giving scores between zero and 10, right? Because nobody gave like anything above a five. So, okay, but then I know what I uh, kind of where, where to get you. Um, what are you working on right now? Like unrelated or related to your study? I don't care. Last year, no, actually two years ago, I met a guy who uh, was a professional coach for League of Legends, which I, you know, found fascinating. So this guy started, you know, collecting um, gaming data. So like, what are you working on right now? What are you passionate about? What do you, what do you do next to your studies? Nikki, what's the course that you follow? Give me some project names. It was uh, decision support systems. Decis well, what are decision support systems? Yeah, it was like, um, yeah, making systems to support uh, marketing decisions, but okay. it's, it's like a year ago, so I don't know uh, a lot of it anymore, but. Okay, okay, that's maybe a good lesson learned. Um, sometimes your skills fade, right, if you don't practice. So practice yeah. makes, makes, you, makes, you, make, makes you excel in this. All right, I still wanna know about projects. What stuff are you working on? Usually, the marketing analytics crowd is like super entrepreneurial. So you have like two businesses per person and I don't know, two internships. So, um, but you know, maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll heal that later. Um, that's fine too. So uh, let me see what other stuff is relevant to this class. Just a sec. Um, uh, yeah, well, that's an important one. Where do you wanna work and which function when you finish this program? Do you have any idea? Give me company names, give me functions, give me, yeah, stuff that you want to spend your time on. You want to go abroad maybe because you didn't have the chance because of the virus. I don't know. Just give me an idea. And I don't seem, I'm trying to scroll down in the chat, but nothing happens. So maybe you haven't written stuff. Data analysis in the Netherlands. Okay, cool. On a marketing consultant. Cool. Um, as a consultant, you know, maybe you will not scrape yourself, but you will tell clients that scraping may be like an option, right? Maybe Wouter is not the one who wants to, I don't know, right? Be a professional coder, but who needs to coordinate a team of coders, right? So this class is also super relevant for you because, um, you know, ultimately you need to understand what, you know, the technicians are talking to you about. Um, Gijs needs some inspiration. So hopefully we can give you some inspiration. Consultancy data analysis. Okay, thanks for that. So uh, we're gonna proceed um, um, with um, the recorder. Quickly gonna uh, stop the recording here um, because this is the first introduction, which is also um, uh, stuff that I'm gonna post um, to the folks that um, do deep prep. So um, thanks a bunch for watching this little intro.